we've had a nice break. Uh, right, over to Bjorn Roth from Nofema, um, and he'll be talking about uh, the capture of herring with persane and subsequent effects on quality. Can you hear me, Bjorn? No. I can hear you. Ah, good. Yeah, you can all hear me? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear, and I can see mm -hmm. you now. Okay. Yes. Good luck. I'm looking forward to this. Yes, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Bjorn Watt. I, I, I work at Nofima in Stavanger. Uh, the project I'm going to tell you about is a project I had over a decade ago. Uh, I mostly work at the aquaculture industry. And I had a colleague next to me who was working in the plastic, towards the plastic industry that had, uh, he, he was a little bit overwhelmed with work. So I got a project from him that was, uh, that was supposed to look at the deviations. In, in, in filler quality within the within the pelagic industry on the herring. Um, and they have occasional very soft, what we call jelly tail. And I got this project, I came from the agriculture industry. Uh, so, so on my first meeting, uh, I changed a little bit about the, let's uh, see, is it what, page now? Sorry, ah, ah here it goes. Uh, and, and then I changed the, the agenda. I said that uh, we know that the deviations, the jelly, is, 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 has background in biology uh, before you start fishing. So, so why not look on the fishing vessel itself, look on different uh, scenarios within fishing that, that could change the quality in either worse way or, or better way. So, so here I got a little bit of things I learned from aquaculture, been working on, kind of identify three areas we should work at. One was on crowding. We know that crowding is important because you have the, that's where, where you can stress the fish and deplete the energy resources. Then second is the pumping, because we do know that pumping technology is very essential how much you crowd them. You really need a good pumping capacity in order to, to reduce crowding and remove the fish quickly from, from the net. And, and also about some of the mechanical issues around the pumping technology. And also the third one was storing that temperature and time are, are, are essential for this uh, for this um, issue. Uh, on, on this occasion, we know there are other effects as well. You you have filling rate, you have weather, you have seasonal changes, you, you have kind of different things. But we kind of try to identify how do things look like throughout the chain. And so so we put it in kind of three. Uh, three uh, different levels, crowding, pumping, and storing uh, in, in different scenarios within the fishing. So to take a little bit first about the crowding and stunning, uh, the reason why I call it stunning is that we wanted to isolate the effect, what was happening in the pen? How did the fish respond at the moment you start crowding them and got them to the vessel at the time they were, they, they were crowded enough that you can start the pumping? But that's that's kind of where the best quality you can get. That you can't get a better better than that. Before that, it, it's impossible to catch. So we wanted to look in that little uh, that little hour, what what happens, and it turns out pretty quickly. Uh, the the idea was that we're going to stand with a dip net and we're going to start picking up fish, taking blood samples, and what I realized was the capacity of uh, of of uh, the capacity of uh, the modern fleet was a big catch, 100 tons, which is not so big. That was kind of 50 minutes, and then it was gone. So we had to go on several occasions getting blood samples in order to get the first half an hour. And from each fish we had blood samples, we can do Riger and pH, and then we took the, then we took the fish back at the lab, and we, we filtered it, and then we sorted it into two groups. One, we evaluated fresh, and then we froze them in standard ways and tore them back and then looked at the quality because herring, uh, plastic species are mostly uh, mostly sold as, as frozen products. So we really wanted to look on how does the quality in the end look like when it's frozen. Uh, to go very quickly about the results here, what you see is, uh, first of all, the blood lactate. It starts at time zero. Time zero is not when you start crowding. Time zero is the time it's crowded enough for you to start pumping. And you see the lactate is about one to two uh, uh, millimole per liters, which is not so bad, really. Uh, so, so they respond pretty good, this crowding. It's no 
signs of pure hypoxia and, and, and in, in, in that scenario. And within 30 minutes, we do see what we could say a rise in a rise in, in, in lactate, blood lactate, a steadily rise. And and this this is very similar to what we see in pH. It starts about 7.8, which is one of the lowest levels, the highest levels you can get uh, on, on, on stressed animals. And it, it falls down to approximately about 6.9, 6.8 within a half an hour. So it's very similar to what we've seen previously on other species. Um, so, but at least within half an hour, they can cope pretty nicely to, to crowding. Uh, if you look on muscle pH, you can see the development after storage. There I tried to just sort them out. How does it look on, on the first five minutes and then five to 15 minutes and 15 to 30 minutes, trying to divide these groups in together and it falls nicely into, in, into, into three groups. And within 24 hours, they're more or less similar. So, and also we can see in Riker, the fish taking the first minutes, they had a pre-Riker time, uh, approximately about 12 hours. And after, after a little bit of crowding, you will see it goes faster, but not so fast. We, we still have a, a Riker between nine and 12 hours. Just to give you a comparison with salmon, most, most study, the, it is pretty similar really, except this, the, 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 the control group can often be longer. But these are wild species, they're smaller, uh, there's more activity while you're crowding them. So, so, so far, so good. And then how does the quality look like uh, on this? Well, here it starts to show an effect. If we look on the hardness of the fillet, uh, the breaking force and hardness, we do see a difference between the control group and the stress group. And now we're starting to divide in the beginning, uh, the ones we take immediately and the ones we take in end uh, of, of the crowding. And here we see that the, the, you do have an effect uh, on, on both. It is significant. Interesting is when you freeze it, it's natural when you freeze into something, you really soften it and it changes the quality attributes. So, so it's, it's normal to see that the texture becomes much softer after you freeze and thaw it. But interesting to see here is that the quality traits that it was stressed or not, uh, still continues down that road. Uh, so, so you can actually see the effect both on the fresh product and then you can see the, the effect on the frozen product. And then we also had a bigger group. Uh, we, we, we did divide into a more subjective uh, on, on fillets that we graded all the fillets in, in one, two, three. So, so here's the picture, you see one good, two in the middle, and three here you see the gaping goes up. We also see grade them after the blood amount and also gaping scores, try to give it more gray throughout the system. And so if we go in and see again, how does it look like the, uh, the, 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 the fish? And what we do see is that as expected, there's not so much big difference between this control group of stress and gaping on a fresh product. There will be a little bit, uh, but mostly when you freeze them, then you, you, you really provoke the effect. So what we really see is that we have a significant change in, in stress, in particular for the fish that is stressed and frozen at all, there you accelerate the process. Uh, same thing with the blood on, on a fresh product, we're trying to evaluate the blood based on, on, on the visual appearance. And we do see here also that the control group has, is, has an average of 0 0.4 in, in grade on, on blood, that's from one to three while 1.2 was, was for stressed fish. And once you freeze the mature, you wash it away, you get the water, you lose this water. So it seems you have removed a lot of these attributes. But notice the quality score, because the quality, just previously we had a question, how does, how does a live, fresh, good product look like? Uh, notice the number here, because if you look at the fresh score, you have a score of one. This I evaluated, and the judges, that was, a, that was a, three technicians working on random material, 
they score it uh, as in average about one on the fresh product. Once you freeze it and thaw it, you get the gaping more pronounced, and then they're starting to, to increase uh, increase the scoring. In particular, the stressed one is now in the two. So you have much more gaping. It is now in between those th three grades. Then we have a little bit about color. We have some only interesting there is that you can see on the frozen product where they can catch it with, with looking at it with, with their eyes. Uh, the redness on the frozen and thawed were able to, to be a difference. But, but again, we didn't get much from this color analysis. Okay, now we know how it looks like when you catch a fish uh, from the pen uh, or from, from, from the persane. Question is, how does it look for, further on? All the fish has to go through a pump. We do know that pumping has a big effect on the fish because you want the capacity up. You have a lot of forces, and particularly in the fisheries industry in plastic, they use impeller pumps. And impeller pumps are like they have a big impeller, propeller in, in the middle going around, and that generates sucking water and generates a high speed. And the fish go through through there. There are two things they have to look at. One, if the speed is not good enough, the fish can get in contact with the impeller and get chopped off. So you really need speed and force. Second, if you really drive a high force, then you get a high gravity and high, high, high force and in collision also as well. So there, there's the balance on which the fishermen often adjust their pumps according to the size of the species, the volume, and how much they can, they can drive. The bigger species, more power you need in order so they don't get in contact with the impeller. So we wanted to test how does the how does the pump affect the quality directly? So we 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 had three settings on the pump: low, medium, and and high uh, and, and high pressure. We, we just measure this in bar because that's the, it's the air. It goes on air, and see how is it respond. The, the medium is what they commonly use on a herring. So so we used lower what they commonly use, and we used higher. And we try to, and there are three things we can look at when you see the pumping. One is to see the blood of the head. Here, here, here's a picture of three scores on, on how you can see how they, they, they are hemorrhaging uh, in, in the head. Uh, so we try to, 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 to put a score from, from, from zero, uh, from one to three. Uh, on the left is like a herring should look like it when you like to go in the shop. And number three is, is when they're starting having uh, hemorrhaging. So this can be pressure related and, and pressure related. Uh, and also severely injured, when they deliver, they sort out the fish. It's not like everything goes in the fillet machine. They, they, they comes up chopped up animals. They comes up very injured animals and they go to fish meal industry. So from a whole tank, from each different uh, pressure, we could get the how much of the lot that was sorted out for fish meal. And then we could predict approximately how many percent of the animals were sorted out, where the industry itself found out it was not, it was not fit for human consumption. And as you see here, uh, here you see here, you see that uh, the amount of fish that got sorted out due to severe injuries, that means it is chopped up really badly in the head, that went from 4% to 80 bars, to 12% at 160 bars. So, so one out of 10 of fish uh, was sorted out due to the effect of pumping. And notice in the middle, that's the common they often use on this pump, and that, that's about 8%. And that was pretty much what they, they experienced. If we look on the head injuries, we do just see the same. We see that the score is a few, even at a low, we're not the one, but at least when you increase the pumping, you, you get more blood in the head. The question also we don't know is how much of these was sorted out before it came to us, because we sorted after they were boxed. So we didn't look on the ones sorted out. So, so likely there are some big gray numbers here so that, that even, even show more, but, but at least it showed up already there. And gaping, we didn't see much on the texture, but notice the score. We had number one on the one with caught by the dip depth. Now we're up in two. So, so we are already in halfway after pumping how it, how it looks like. Then 
we looked a little bit on quality. Uh, interesting is that we, we sorted out the ones with low pressure and those with high pressure. We didn't have control of the, of the crowding in, into this. So we just need to, 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 to test in, in, in directly. So, so we have everything from beginning to the end of the crowding within the tank. But at least you see there's no significant difference in, in, in water binding or texture or nothing. The, the, the fish, the, the quality of the meat was not directly affected on the pressure of, um, of the pump. If you choose between the commercial one and, and, and the maximum one, maximum. So that was kind of, then we got to that stage. And then the question is, how does it look at when we combine all effects? Uh, that means that, that we, we that we, we we have a control group, we do the crowding, we take out the control group, so and and put that aside in, into chilling um, by DIPNET, like in the beginning, and then we pick out uh, after in different tanks fish in the beginning of a crowd, a fish in the end of the crowd, and then we have two extra tanks where we have about zero degrees and minus 1.5. So we try to. We try to get one experiment that catches most of it. How does it look like in the end? If you account the beginning of the crowding, end of the crowding, low temperature, high temperature storage, and, and, and look in the end at the delivery after freezing, how does the quality look like then? Well, this time we have a little bit more blood samples. So now we, you see we go everything from zero up to 80 minutes, 90 minutes, one and a half hour crowding. We have some catches there over 1,000 metric tons. So we were able to hold on to over an hour with crowding. So, so here you see the picture on the lactate. Uh, I, I must say you're getting really some high values after an hour, but still, if I compare it to other species, it is exhausted animal, but still, it, in order to, to, to keep alive and things a little bit maintained. And you also see the muscle pH, it drops down to the minimum. So, so in the end, you will see here that over time, they will be exhausted. Uh, and, and if you look on the curve, it happens before then later. So, so after 40 minutes from these data, you, you're starting to reach kind of a maximum where you, where you, where you uh, exhaust the animal. But it's still able to cope put it that way. Uh, so, so here you see nicely on the left side um, with the blue, uh, that's the muscle pH, and, and on the right side uh, is lactate uh, with the red. So that's how it's related. So, so this is the data, the complete data we have. Okay. Have also our other blood samples, but it's kind of easier to look at the lactate. But let's look on the muscle pH, because the muscle pH tells us how the energy reserves are in within the animal, how it responds during storage and how things look like. Uh, and remember, we have one control group. This is what we called in the end, the control group we see in the end, uh, which we took out of the pen and, and, and put it inside in the same tank in, in different nets. Uh, what we see is if you look on the crowding on the muscle pH when we take out fish, you see that, yes, there is a difference within uh, in the per se, between in the beginning of the crowd and the end of the crowd. And you, it is significant. And if you look on pump, pumping, it's even, you, you do have a drop, uh, but you see it increases a little differently. And then as we expected, after 48 hours, 86 hours, the pH will keep dropping down to a minimum. Uh, but interesting here, is that what you see is that the fish we killed from the pen has after 24 hours and after 40 or 84 hours is higher. And more interesting is, is you see that the, the difference between a long and a long and short crowding condition is that it's kind of reversing. So, so there's something going on in that tank. We do not, it looks bad when it goes in, but in the end at 24 hours, they're both exhausted, but it seems like the one is even more, has, has emptied faster. So it seems the one that is, has been crowded for a short time is going into tank with high energy reserves and struggling for a long time. That, that, that could be something really interesting when you look, look into the whole concept. So, and then we go into quality. How does, here we divided quality 
in different genres. We wanted to look on tail because tail jelly nest is very important. We were lucky. We had a little bit of tail jelly in, in this experiment. So we were able to focus a little bit on this. And we also want to look at single flip, uh, single fillets. We also looked on flaps because it's different filleting machines. They were frozen toward. Uh, you see that there was a pretty big material. We're talking about 1,700 fillets we were looking through. So this is a big number. So we're catching kind of randomly boxes. So we're getting everything, uh, everything from short, short and long stun uh, crowd condition. So, so, so we get we get in good conditions how it looks in the first thirty minutes and, and the last after after one hour, how it looks like. And again, look at the score. We're starting at this. We're starting at the score. Uh, in the end, we do see that uh, on the crowding is significant, but we do see that that you're about two. We have gone from one, and now we're on the two. So, so the, here's the. Here you have an effect of, of, of if you want to score something, at least we have some some idea on, on, on where we're on the scale. It's not the worst, it's not the best either. And then you look on the gaping from a zero to five Anderson scale. They are now increasing again. So now they're average, average about, about two, uh, but there's not much difference between if, they're, if the crowding conditions, uh, but the tail jelly is starting to show a little bit effect, particularly one group. Uh, but we do see that that there there is a tendency that there's a little bit lower in lower tail jelly in fish that was crowded a little bit longer, but it's, it's not big. It's kind of with hits out significantly. And same in gaping and blood. Uh, so there was no consistent data here. The same one was much worse than the other. They were kind of flipping around in, in, in randomly order. But the one other thing that hit out pretty clearly was the temperature. Because remember, we had this is this is complete data, but we did have separate separate uh, separated them in temperature of one group, comparing minus one point five versus zero degrees. And here you see a big di difference on all changes. All the ones that was in minus one point five compared to zero degrees, they had less scaping. They had uh, less tail gaping. They had less tail uh, jelly, and uh, less jelly and blood. So, so, so again, either way you did it, on on in the end, also the freezing, now the the storage temperature was was relatively important. So, what are the conclusions of this result, uh, this project? Well, time is important. Uh, the crowning time is is so essence, but uh, the herring is a robust species. It it, it 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 handles crowding pretty fairly compared to to other species I work with. So so, but the shorter time, the better it is. Uh, stress does have an effect on quality. Yes, it does. But uh, the physical effect from pumping uh, is directly affecting the quality. Um, but whether stress or not, in terms of physical damages with, with it going through. Uh, also, the fish dies in in the tanks due, due to hypoxia, uh, and that certainly overshadows everything that, that you previously was trying to, to, to repair at. And, and when it comes to the end of the quality, well, time and temperature and, and, and freezing, if you're freezing and towing it, it that's, they are the main effects of quality. So, so in order to, if you, if you should solve this, it kind of, I would say that you have to improve the stunning because, because the only way you have to improve the quality and maintain a very good pumping and chilling technology is to stun the animal books. There you can get it in the condition once it like in the pen. Uh, also pumping technology is changing. This has changed a lot since this time. Uh, reason is that the, the salmon industry has, has grown enormously when it comes to the volume. So they're requiring pumps like the plastic industry does, but they do not accept the impeller injuring the salmon. So today you have new pumps, what we call snail house pumps, that are impeller pumps where they are protected within. They're like a snail house within, so they don't get injured. But uh, there, there's, there, there's new 
technology has a very of interest. So that was about it. I guess I managed to hold five minutes over time. I'm sorry. But <laughs> yeah. No problem, Bjorn. Uh, but I, I'm under orders. I'm not allowed to ask any questions of you because Michelle yeah, knows yeah. I'll be uh, I'll be speaking to you for hours. Uh, yeah. But uh, excellent presentation. Thank you. It's uh, yeah. it, that is really important work. So um, thank you very much for sharing it with yeah. us.